Hello, everyone from Izmir, Turkey. Today we are speaking about core physiology concepts that take part in most of the exams, especially board exams and uh, medical faculty exams, and as well as in daily life in our clinical practice. Let's start with our slides. Uh, can we take our slides on the screen, please? Okay. Uh, as you know, it's core concepts of main physiological borders and main physiological uh, items has lots of categories that takes part in lots of categories on exams in daily life and in labs, of course, as well as uh, that kind of any high yield questions and board exams and our clinical practice and solving many problems our patients suffering from any kind of problems from pediatric patients to lots of patients from internal medicine and uh, surgery patients as well and in some circumstances and uh, psychiatric patients as well so uh what does it mean by the term core concepts core concepts mean main physiological mechanisms taking part in lots of biochemical reactions on the body and pharmacological reactions, and lots of main parts of our human body taking part in anatomical structures and microscopic structures as well. So how about the effectivity of core concepts? Core concepts has main effectivity on uh, lots of balance on the body and making the uh, similar structures for lots of um, illnesses and diseases, as well as pathological mechanisms taking part, I think in my part, as main cause of uh, some illnesses and some pathological disorders. Main uh, subjectives and main headlines of today are cellular physiology as well as immunology. And let us talk about basic terms of endocrine physiology. And of course, no doubt, very high yield for board exams, GI physiology, but not all GI physiology, because this GI physiology has many, many structures that we have no time to take. We have, of course, on doubt, there, uh, there is no doubt we have, um, we have limited time for mayor aspects of GI physiology, but because uh, that's why we will take part only at a glance of GI physiology today. And uh, some synopsis of cardiovascular physiology for uh, the main structures of cardiology and any kind of structures of our physiological exams. And at last, we will talk about features of renal system and acid base disorders on our other lessons after this lesson. So let's talk about immunology key points of physiology. As we know, all granule sites have bioactive compounds named as cytoplasmic granulas. This, this granulas has major parts of secreting some hormones, some endocrine cytokines, and some immunological cytokines, as well as uh, any kind of pathologic mechanisms like fever, pain, or inflammation. As we know from hematology lessons, lifespan of one neutrophil is six hours at bloodstream. This is the key point here, six hours at bloodstream. So uh, that's why neutrophils are very important for in highly inflammatory disorders, but their lifespan is really short in the body, but they take part in minor immunological mechanisms. Other, another high yield point is the capillary structures because they pass capillary structures by diapedesis. We'll see on the uh, diagrams of about how the diapedesis occur on vascular systems of the body, because they pass through the wall of the vascular system and they go to tissues and they start uh, immunological reactions like inflammation. And one of the other basic neutrophil function is cell killing as we know it from immunology lessons, which is organized by oxygen metabolites and proteolytic enzyme systems in granulas, which granulas are highly active and they are high, high valued and uh, really high yield for board exams, especially in physiology as well as in pathology questions. How about superoxide and hydrogen peroxide, which are very killing chemicals of body. We are very dangerous killing chemicals for body, but very dangerous for what? It's not only for your body. It's, it's killing capacity is mostly consist for bacteria. It's not so dangerous for our body in some quantities, as of course, but it's uh, high risky. It's, it's very important for microscopic structures like micro of the bacteria, of course. 
two, and two superoxide and two hydrogen molecules are catalyzed in order to product hydrogen peroxide. And uh, the catalytic enzymatic reaction is catalyzed by superoxide desmoitase. The main catalytic enzyme system here is superoxide desmoitase. So uh, this is the main reaction here. This is catalyzed by superoxide desmutase. So this reaction, as you hear, two oxygens and two hydrogen molecules are going to a reaction. And as a result of the reaction, as a conclusion, hydrogen peroxide and oxygen we see as byproducts. Another key point of immunology is one of the most important key points nowadays, as we know from the vaccination of COVID-19 outbreak, which are called memory cells. So after an, after an antigenic stimulation, some spaces of T cells as well as B cells are reorganized in order to build memory cells. Of course, the B cells are organizing memory cells and T cells and reorganize any kind of T cells to make a stimulation uh, triggered by any antigenic stimulation. So any circumstances on the body, like any microscopic invasion, any tumor stimulus, trigger a targeted factor cell response. So this is the main pathway for acquired immunity in the body. As you know it, one of the main pathways is quiet immunity. And how about cytokines? Cytokines are immune regulators that take part by a paracrine effect. So what kind of paracrine effect and what kind of immune regulators take part in the body in the chemical reactions? For example, interleukin-1 is one of the most important interleukin, is one of the important cytokine for septic shock and rheumatoid arthritis. How about interleukin-2? It takes part on the pathway of lymphokine activated killing systems in the body. Interleukin 4 is catalyzed or reaction of overproduction of immunoglobulin E, which takes part in parasitic infections and allergic reactions like asthma or atopic dermatitis. How about interleukin 11? Interleukin 11 takes main clinical importance, which, which is uh, take major part which is used to reduce thrombocytopenia on cancer patients. Uh, the main clinical importance of interleukin-11 is it is used to reduce thrombocytopenia on cancer patients. There's a main diagram of any kind of cytokines showing, showing T cells and B cell functions. As a consequence of T cell consequences, interleukin-2, proliferation and apoptosis or energy, which is triggered by any antigenic stimulation and other consequences of memory cells, of course, it's not on this diagram, are catalyzed by any other reactions, but the mainly it's catalyzed by paracrine effect, as we told. So how about other stimulations cause what kind of immunologic reactions? Here, as you see here, with this, the follicular mantle here in the outer area, and memory cell production and plasma cell, and they're going out from there. This is from the exit from the germinal center. Here is a macrophage, as you see here, macrophage cell takes mere part, uh, which is a selected stimulation, of uh, any kind of particles and phagocytosis, anything of microcytosis here. As you see, they, there are some kind of somatic hypermutations take part here, which is a, kind of uh, it's the main topic of pathology not physiology but by the way i wanted to show it here but we'll explain it uh, nowadays in our next pathology lessons not physiology lessons how about the entire incubulative effect of cellular system it is collected by cellular membrane it's a big organization here it's kind it includes lots of lipid barriers and as well as protein structures here let us talk about the lipid structures and the membranes and, and the cellular membrane uh, the, the main lipid structures which is very high yield and uh for lots of purposes like usmle purposes or plant purposes and board exams is one of them is phosphatidylcholine and about the, the second one is phosphatidylserine and the third one is phosphatidylatinolamine. The three lipid structures take part, this is called phospholipids, take part in the membranes. Suppose one should not underestimate the organic and kinetic structure of the membrane. The membrane is not a static structure, is a kinetic structure and very organic structure. Here the main diagram is, is an illustration of the uh, 
organic membrane, the cellular membrane here. As you see here, glycolapide complex and phospholipids here, as well as any globular proteins and hydrophobic segments of alpha helix protein, as well as oligosaccharide side chain here on the outside area. It also includes some integral proteins and peripheral proteins, but the, the idea here, it has hydrophobic parts of protein which are located on internal aspect of membrane and though uh, hydrophilic structures tend to locate on outer aspects again hydrophilic structures take part on outer aspects and hydrophobic parts of proteins are located on internal aspects so membranes and another feature here is a common attachment system for proteins is glycosylated phosphatidyl inositol system, glucosylated phosphatidyl inositol system. How about lysosomas? There are lots of, uh, as you know, lots of pathological disorders caused by lysosomas because lysosomes are very important here. Uh, I will explain why it is so important for our human physiology. Because the main structures, they are the main structures of extended acidity environment. Extended acidity is very important for lysosomal functions. And as we know, all damaged cell structures and other material, for example, bacteria, are digested and killed by lysosomal systems. And another feature of it, this is very high yield for exams, it has its own proton pump in order to maintain the acidic environment. It has its own proton pump, it causes an acidic environment. So this pump uses ATP to build up more acidic pH for body. The most important enzyme systems located on lysosomas are acid hydrolases. Acid hydrolases are very important enzymes located on lysosomas. These are the main uh, micrographic structures of lysosomal organization and cells. As you see here, there are some uh, other components of MAC22 compartments here on lysosomas. Because lysosomes are the most digested part of cell, that's why they have acidic pH, and very very important for perforating systems for uh, destruction of other cells like bacteria. As I told you before, membranes are dynamic structures. While membranes are dynamic, the uh, cells. On regulators do not wait for another action to be called dynamic. This is the paranoia here uh, because uh, it's very ironic. I know it, but the cells on regulators do not wait for another reaction to be called dynamic because cell has lots of activities. Cell moves or uh, cell develops every time and every second. So what causes this cell mobility or cell activity? There are some molecules for it. One of is Kinesin systems, dynein systems, and myosin systems. So let's talk about them. Uh, kinesin is a two-headed structures func functioning to positive poles in the body, uh, in the cells. And dyneins also have two heads, which are integrated structures to the protein complex uh, in the cell. So myosin heads are attached to actin and they move with one head following the other or bending the next structures. So these are attachments or actin to myosin complexes for moving cells, like, for example, muscle cells. So this is the main structure of dynein and organic vesicles and dynein then actin integration. So this makes body for motility. They take part as a model enhancer at the cell that takes part on kinesine and any kind of reactions of cell mobility that cause cell uh, that's that's why we call cells alive and because they are mobile structures let's, let's talk about hormonal structures one of the other concepts of core concepts of physiology all hormone structures consist of what steroids amines and peptides the main hormonal structures consist of steroids amines and peptides uh, as we know it from organic chemistry so let's talk about, that's very clinically important, catecholamines and peptide hormones, as we know them from internal medicine lessons, which are transferred on plasma by dissolution. This, are, this is one of the main points of catecholamines and peptide hormones. So since steroid hormones are hydrophobic, their transportation is regulated by complexes, 
called steroid binding proteins. These are specific binding structures of steroid hormones because, as we know it, they are hydrophobic, not hydrophilic. So that's the main uh, biochemical structures of steroids. Of course, the core structure here is cholesterol. This is the cholesterol molecule taking part, mayor part, on the organization of steroid hormone biosynthesis. As you see here, the seven catecholesterol and five and six epo epoxy cholesterol and uh, 25 hydroxy cholesterol, which is very important for other reactions and 7-alpha-hydroxycholesterol with another uh, cat cat uh, another catabolic part of it. So cholesterol has a core structure for biosynthesis of steroid hormones. So how about hormone releasing? Hormone releasing mostly performed by exocytosis because the system is activated based upon stimulation and then it's triggered and after, trig after uh, it's triggered for any kind of stimulus, and releasing mostly performed by exocytosis. And generally, hormone secretion is a pulsatile nature, so this has a significant value for therapeutic targets for any kind of medications or any kind of new therapeutic targets. Hydrophilic hormone levels are base concepts involving cell membrane receptor activity. So hydrophilic hormone effects are very important for a membrane receptor, receptor activity. How about hydrophobic hormone effects? They are designed enormously by nuclear receptors. This is the key point here for exams because hydrophobic hormone effects are designed by nuclear receptors. This uh, difference from uh, other kind of like uh, hydrophilic receptors. These are steroid hormone receptors taking part here in the steroid hormone reactions, which are nuclear. They are uh, located in the nucleus. So that's why steroid hormone receptors, which are hydrophobic, take part. How about hormone feedback systems? Like every part of the body which has a balance. So that's why cellular reactions and intercellular reactions has and integrated systems, and they all have a balance between them. So one thing here is positive feedback. Another thing is negative feedback. On positive feedback systems, one hormone effect trigger other hormone effect, and it increases stimulation of it, so it increases the quantities of it in the bloodstream. For negative feedback, it means it's cuts of it drops down the uh, stimulation or a uh, biosynthesis of one hormone. So it cuts uh, all the diagram here. So there's no outcome for any hormone production on negative feedback. Let's take a glance for a GI physiology. As we know, with GI, it takes by a part of lots of exams, board exams. Uh, GI intestinal system includes a huge fluid environment like our whole body. And for example, as for quantity, GI system takes uh, 7,000 milliliters of liquid per day, which is an addition to oral intake to 2,000 milliliters. That makes a very big quantity for 9,000 milliliters uh, a day. So another important key point is sodium and chlorine. The chlorine and sodium are absorbed together in the body. And sodium is transported via an epithelial membrane channel. This is another key point. And all secretion process takes part continuously for establishing effective movement throughout the digestive system. This is the main part of digestive system here because uh, take all secretion process takes part without any interruption. And chlorous uptake is run and well coordinated by basolateral sodium, potassium, and two chlorous transporter system. This is the key point here. This is the main idea here is the well coordination of basolateral sodium, potassium, and two chlorous system. This is the main system running chloraptic. This is the main diagram here is sodium, potassium, and chlorate co-transporter. It works for sodium, potassium, and chlorous uptake and regulation in the body as well as in the GI system. Uh, let's talk about a hormonal activity of uh, gastrointestinal or digestive system. The main hormonal activity is called endocrine and paracrine systems. The entire system also works in coordination with extrinsic innovation, 
not alone, of course, with innovation support. And enteric nervous system also divert to signal traffic according to the processes of physiological access. This is another point of it. About a GI hormonal activity, which is called endocrine and paracrine systems. If endocrine system is called, like any hormones trigger any kind of gastrointestinal reaction, Paracrine systems in the cell, in the neighborhood, cause or cause or triggers any kind of reaction in the neighborhood uh, with another cell. For example, enter there are enterochromaffin cells which secrete serotonin. It's responsible for secretion of serotonin in the body in the uh, in a GI tract. So ECL cells uh, secrete histamine, which is very important for uh, digestive system as a neurohormonal structure. How about the G cells of gastric antrum? This they takes part, may have part in the secretion of gastrin. How about the upper part of intestinal system, especially eye cells? This is a key point here is eye cells uh, takes major part in the secretion of cholecystokinin. And S cells, an upper part of intestinal system, takes major part for secretin. How about VIP? VIP is vasoactive intestinal peptide. It's not a hormone. It's found on GI nerves and is responsible for water secretion in the intestinal system. It is responsible for water secretion in the intestinal system. And how about the K cells of duodenum and jejunum? They cause secretion of GIP, which takes major part of inhibition of gastric motility and secretion. And finally, how about the pancreatic hormonal system uh, for exocrine or endocrine pancreas is very important for D cells. D cells are located in pancreas and uh, they, they take the main part of secretion of somatostatin. How about the part, how about the role of somatostatin in the body? It inhibits the uh, secretion of gastrin, VIP, GIP, and secretin. One of the main aspects of somatostatin is inhibiting the secretion of gastrin, VIP, GIP, and secretin. And additionally, it blocks the activity of exocrine pancreatic activity, as well as decreasing stomach motility and blocking the contraction of gallbladder. So finally, I want to remind you that uh, it's very important the activity of gallbladder, it's very important for the activity of gallbladder because it blocks the contraction of gallbladder. How about peptide YY? Peptide YY blocks the cellular cascade of stomach acid secretion, so it interrupts the stomach acid secretion and blocks the gastric motility, and and it stimulates accumulation of lipids, and additionally, accumulation of lipids stimulates general pancreatic YY secretion. If there's lipid accumulation in jejunal aspect and anatomic structures, so it increases peptide YY secretion as a consequence. How about substance P? Substance P is very important for pain, but another thing on the GI, it's mostly found on GI endocrine and nerve cells. That, for example, we, uh, we can see any kind of question asking us substance P is located on which anatomical structures? So we can answer is GI, endocrine, and nerve cells. And how about the mayor uh, function of substance P in the gastrointestinal systems? It increases intestinal modality. It's very interesting, isn't it? It increases intestinal modality. So uh, as every integrated concept, uh, it has own features for quality improvement and, of course, careful checklists like whole body or inner cells or any molecular integration. Cellular system has this feature much more than any manufactured organization. So if a damaged DNA is recognized and defined by the cell, there are two choices, ignoring and restoring. If it ignores, it doesn't work. But another thing is restoring it in order to take mayor part to the cellular structures because restoration uh, make healing of this disorganized structures on DNA. So all RNA structures are monitored during translation. And finally, any abnormal structures are identified simultaneously during the attachment of protein chains to ER in the plasmic reticulum or Golgi apparatus. So conclusion. 
What is the conclusion of this restoration or ignoring? Abnormal proteins are destroyed within lysosomes and protosomes. The critical point here is lysosomes and protosomes are main parts for destroying abnormal proteins in cellular reactions. And finally, of course, of cell integration and uh, cellular structures are main parts of art of the cellular structure because there's a hidden art on the cells and organelles on lysosomes, on ER and cellular nucleus, as well as on DNA and chromatin. So this is the art of the body. Uh, is called art. Here is the, uh, as you know, in Philadelphia, United States, here is the uh, artificial, but of course, it's one of the main parts of art buildings of Philadelphia. This, this is the modern, this is the Museum of Modern Art in Philadelphia here. So you see, uh, I've taken this photo in a snowy day, like nowadays in the United States. So this is the main uh, building of uh, Museum of Modern Art in Philadelphia. There are lots of paintings and sculptures. Uh, it's very important and it's very valuable parts. Of course, concisely, you should see it when you go to the United States, of course, Philly area. So uh, thanks for your patience and I appreciate your interest in this webinar. Of course, we will go on our lessons nowadays and ne on next week. So you can send us your questions on our web portal or you can take you can send emails to our web part. So our team will be happy to help uh, your questions, uh, directing or diverting your questions to me, and I'll be uh, I'll I'll be I'll appreciate taking your questions and I answer them as much as I can do that. Uh, have a nice day and uh, have a nice weekend. So we will see everybody on our next lessons.